Would you like some tips on creating fur using pastels? In this video, I'll show you four different ways of achieving a similar result with different types of pastels, and then I'll show you four different types of fur using my favorite method of working with pastels. I'm Kirsty Rebecca, and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. As always with my pastel work, I'm starting out with Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat as the base. And you can buy this in pads or in single sheets and it comes in a variety of colours but today I'm just using the white. For the first example I'll be using pastel pencils by themselves and I'm just using these Faber-Castell Pit Pastels. You can use any pastel pencil that you have, I also like using the Carbothello Pastels. So for the first four examples I'm using the same image just to show how close you can get using different varieties of pastels. So in this first one I'm just using the pastel pencils and when you're working in a subject that's black and white just make sure that your black areas aren't completely black and your white areas aren't completely white. So at the moment I'm actually using a dark blue pencil to fill in the black areas and then I'll go in with some darker colours on top of that and some highlights on top of that as well just so it stops the black bit looking flat. And it's the same with the white areas as well. You don't want to go in just white because you won't be able to add any highlights on top of white. So I usually start out with more of a creamier color or a darker color than just white. And then when I go and put the highlights in, at least there's something underneath for the white highlights to actually show up. When you're working with pastel pencils, it's still the same process where you have to layer your fur on top of each other and then blend out in between each layer. Once you have your first layer down with your pastel pencils, you can blend it out so that you can soften that layer a little bit and push the pastel into the tooth of the paper, which allows you to add more pastel on top. And I usually blend it out with my fingers or a blending stump and sometimes I use these cotton tips because I always have them laying around the house. Then once you have that base layer down, you can go back in with some more pastel pencils and then just repeat the process until you get the level of saturation and colour that you are after. Another tip when you're working with fur that looks like it's one colour, for example this tiger has a lot of sections that look kind of orangey brown. Just make sure that you're not using the same colour over the entire piece and then no other colours. So for example, I'm using a lot of oranges and yellows and browns and reds and different kind of colours in that orange fur so it just doesn't look monotonous and the same across the whole piece. Working with pastel pencils can actually be the most expensive way to do a piece, especially if you're doing a really large piece because you can imagine, yes it's cheap to buy a set of pastel pencils in comparison to soft pastels or pan pastels but the amount of pastel that you get in each pencil is really not that much in comparison to a pastel stick. So if you're doing an entire piece with pastel pencils, you're going to wear down that pencil really quickly and you're going to need to buy more pencils more often. But if you've only got pastel pencils or you're just starting out and can't afford to buy a big set of pastels or you're working really small and then this is a great option for you to start out with. Don't worry too much about adding detail in the first few layers because you'll end up blending it out when you go in with your cotton tip or your blending stump. But make sure that even when you're blending you're following the direction of the fur because if you go sideways instead of vertical here you'll be able to see those pencil strokes in the end result. So just make sure that you're paying attention to your reference photo and which way the direction the fur is going. When you're working with pastel pencils by themselves, they're not as bright and vibrant as some of the soft pastel options out there. So sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get those really bright vivid colours or white highlights when you're using pastel pencils by themselves. So here you can see I'm adding a little bit of yellow to those orange colours in the fur and a little bit of pinks and cream colours to the white part of the fur just to make it look less flat. So basically when you're working with pastel pencils, it's just a layering process like anything else. Put a layer down and then blend it out and then go back on top with more pencil and then continue to blend it out until you get to the end result that you like. In the final, de like in the final layers, I tend to add a little bit more detail and start overlapping some of the fur on top of each other and letting those pencil strokes show through so that it looks a little bit more like fur rather than really blurry. So moving on to the next example, I'll be using hard pastels and I'm just using these Conti pastel sticks and you can use whatever brand you have but these are the ones that I have available so I'll use those to show you. Using hard pastel sticks can be quite a lot quicker than using pastel pencils because if you want to fill in a large area you can actually just turn the stick to the side and then fill it in that way. And you also don't have to sharpen it like a pastel pencil. So that can save you a bit of time. 
I find that working with pastel sticks is a little bit easier to blend as well. So once you have a layer down, I find that it, it blends into the paper a little bit easier and into each color a little bit easier as well. When you get to the final layer and you're wanting to add in those little details and you don't have a sharp point on your pastel stick anymore, you can just snap that pastel in half and use one of the corners there to make those fine details and it works pretty much the same as the pastel pencils. The next example is using soft pastels and here I'm using mainly the Rembrandt pastels. And they're not the softest pastel that you can get but they're the ones that I have so they're what I'm using. With soft pastels, it needs a lot less layers. In fact, you'll fill up the tooth of the paper quite a lot quicker with the pigment because of how much pigment comes off the pastel. And because of how soft they are, it really just comes off quite easily, especially when you're working with a sanded paper like this pastel mat. And it can be an issue with how many layers you can get using soft pastels. So you have to be really careful with what, what colors you're putting down because you may not be able to add that layer on top to be able to fix any colors that you have below. And that also means you've got to be mindful of how much detail you're putting in because if you save the detail to the last layer and you find that you can't actually add any more layers because the tooth is already filled up and then it's going to be an issue. So when you're working with soft pastels by themselves, just keep that in mind that you can't add as many layers as you can with other types of pastel. But in general, working with soft pastels is the same process as working with pastel pencils or the hard pastel sticks. It's just a layering process. So put your colors down, blend it out with your fingers or a blending stump or a cotton tip, and then continue to add layers um, until you get the achieved, the desired result that you're after. One of the main benefits to working with soft pastels is how vibrant they are in comparison to the pastel pencils and the hard pastel sticks. And it can really make your piece pop if you're using these vibrant pastels. This next example is the one that I use the most. So I start out with the pan pastels, which are a soft pastel just compressed into a pan shape. And you apply them with these soft tools. It's S-O-F-F-T. And they're just like a sponge that you can get in all different shapes and sizes. And you just rub them on the top of the pan and then apply them straight to your artwork. You can also mix the pan pastels. So you can start out with a set of 10 or five if you like, and then mix the colors on a separate piece of paper and then apply them to your artwork from there. And I've got another video that I'll link in the description about that if you're just starting out with pastels and it shows you exactly how you can mix them like that. So this is probably the most affordable way of using pastels because you can just buy the five set of pan pastels or 10 set and then mix them to create the colors that you need rather than buying an entire set of pastels to be able to get the exact color that you need. And you don't actually end up using a lot of pastel from the pan, so they do last quite a long time. So I usually start out with the pan pastels for the base layer, and it's the same as working with any other type of pastel, it's just a layering process. When you're working with these, you can really control how much pastel you're putting onto the paper. So you don't have to fill up the tooth as quickly as if you're using soft pastels where it's really hard to control how much pastel you put down. And this is a good thing because that means that you can just put one layer of pan pastel down in a really light layer and then you can go straight on top with pastel pencils over that and there's really no issue because you've still got tons of that tooth of your paper showing through. Whereas if you tried to go on top of soft pastels with pastel pencil, it can be really quite difficult to do that. Pan pastels are also really easy to blend. So when you're doing backgrounds or big solid areas with pastel, it's really easy to build up those layers and blend it out really smoothly with those tools. So there are lots of benefits to them and I'd highly recommend those. Working this way is probably the quickest way to work with pastels as well that I've found. And so when I usually do a pastel piece, I start out with the pan pastels for the base layer and a lot of the time I use them for the background entirely. And then I'll go back on top with pastel pencils for all the details. And if I really need a vibrant color that I can't get with the pastel pencils, I'll go back in with soft pastels on top of that. So you really get the best of all of the different mediums that you can use with pastels. And because this is the most favorite method that I use, I'm going to be showing you how I would create four different types of fur and four different colors of fur using this method. This example is going to be of some golden fur that's a little bit wavy, kind of curly looking. I think it's from a golden retriever. Um, when I'm creating fur, I really try and look for all those hidden colors and really accentuate them. In this golden fur, there's quite a lot of deep red, so I make sure to add 
that in those shadows instead of just using black for the shadows or dark brown instead. And this swatch of fur isn't the same color everywhere. Even in the shadows, it's different in different areas. And these are the things that you really need to pay attention to from your reference photo. In the base layers, I always make sure to choose more vivid colors and it can look kind of weird to start with, but when you blend it out and you continue to lay more muted colors on top, that base layer shows through slightly and it gives it a bit more depth than if you were to just go straight in with the one color that it looks like on the surface. When you're working with curly fur or fur that's kind of wavy, it can be a little bit hard to work out where those curls are going. So when I do my base layers, I try and just block in the general area that that dark bit is in or the light bit. And then when I go back on top with my pastel pencils and the details, that's when I start to refine that shape. And it doesn't have to be exact to the reference photo, but I try and make it as close as possible. You've really just got to think of fur as more clumps and clusters rather than individual pieces of fur. If you start trying to draw every strand of fur or hair, it's going to look really wiry and unrealistic. But I do always include a few little flyaway hairs just to make it look a little bit more realistic. This next piece of fur is from a poodle, I believe, and it is black fur. So it's one of those colors that people seem to have issues with when they're drawing animals. So when blocking in the base layer on complicated fur, like curly fur like this, I just try and get in the darker shapes and the lighter shapes in place and not worry too much about the detail because you can slowly define each, se each section as you continue to layer. And black fur is never just black. There's always blues, purples or reds or another color hidden in there. If you're struggling to see those hidden colors in the black fur, I would suggest taking your reference photo and importing it into a editing program that has an eyedropper tool like Photoshop. And I know that there's some free ones online, but I can't remember the name of them. But you wanna just click a section of the fur with the eyedropper and then see where it appears on the color wheel. Cause that can really help you determine whether it's like a blue shade or a red shade. And you can just purposely add more of those colors into the fur. And adding these subtle colors in will help stop the fur looking flat. Whereas if you just use the black alone, it's, it's gonna look really flat. There's nothing wrong with using black pencil and I use it all the time, but I always make sure that I'm using another color with it as well. So it doesn't just stay black. When you're doing highlights on black fur, don't leave them just white. It can make the animal look like it has really gray hairs and it really ages the animal. So make sure that you add other colors in as well that you see in your reference photo like blue. And blue is a common color because black fur is very reflective and it can show colors that are in the background of the picture. So if the animal is outside, it's very likely that the blue from the sky is showing in your animal's fur. And in between each layer, you'll probably see that I'm blending it out with my finger. And this helps stop it looking so rough. It blends it and makes it a little bit smoother, but it also helps push the pastel into the tooth of the paper. And that way you, it's not sitting on the surface and it allows you to add more pastel on top of that. And as I continue to layer, I'm developing those little um, curls of fur more and more in each layer. And when you have fur like this, where the highlights are really quite bright and the dark areas are pretty dark, make sure that your gradient between the light and the dark is very gradual. So don't just put a big block of white in the middle of the clump of fur. Make sure that your black really fades into that white area so that it looks a little bit more natural and that helps it give it more of that curve shape. And then for the final touches, I'm going in with the white just to bring out those little wispy flyaway hairs that make it look a little bit more realistic. The next swatch of fur is kind of a brown color and it's really quite short. And when doing hair like this, a lot of beginners do their strokes really evenly, starting and stopping at the same point each time with all their hairs going in the same direction. And when you look closely at the reference or the animal in real life, their fur isn't even like that. It's, it's pretty random. Hairs go in the same general direction, but they aren't lined up like a picket fence. Make sure that you vary the point that your hair starts and stops at and make sure that some of the hairs go off on a different angle or curve slightly. And make sure that you don't just use one color for the dark areas, one color for the midtones, and one color for the highlights. And this goes for all different types of fur and colors of fur because it will make the piece look really unrealistic. Just make sure that you vary the colors in different areas. So I'm using different colors of red, different shades of brown and yellowy colors depending on what I see in the reference photo. When you're doing short hair especially, it can seem like the easiest type of hair because there's no really difficult curls or waves or anything like that. 
but when you get to the subject's face, you have to pay really close attention to the direction of the fur, especially around the eyes and the nose. The fur changes direction quite a lot. So make sure that you're looking at your reference photo to make sure that your own artwork reflects what you see in the reference photo. Don't just guess which direction the fur should be going in that area. And I actually look at my reference photo probably more than I'm looking at my own artwork just to make sure I've got every little detail going in the right direction. And paying attention to these little details about the fur direction can really make your piece stand out and look a lot more professional than someone who's just starting out and doesn't notice these things. The last example is white fur and the reason that I actually chose to use white paper today instead of a mid-tone paper is because I get asked a lot, how do you draw white fur on white paper? And the basic answer is white fur is never really white. It always reflects the colors that are around it. So in this reference image, the subject was in a kind of a blue lighting. So you can see in the shadows and in the highlights that I'll be doing in this piece that there's a lot of blue tints to it. So it's the kind of the same thing as when you're drawing black fur. You want to try and see those little like hints of color throughout the fur and really accentuate those in your artwork to bring them out a little bit more. It will make the piece look a lot more realistic and it will make the colors more vibrant than if you just used black, gray and white to create white fur. I used to struggle quite a lot when drawing white fur when I just started out, so I hope that bit of advice is helpful. When you're drawing an animal from a photo, make sure that the photo was taken with the animal outside. And this isn't really an issue if you're drawing wildlife because most wildlife will be outside anyway. But if you're drawing a dog or doing pet portraits, make sure that the photo is taken outside and in the shade. Because if you actually take the photo inside, it can make the fur look kind of brown or yellow and it doesn't give the natural color of that animal's fur. It can make them look kind of dirty. And try and get the photo with the animal in the shade outside because if you do it in the direct sunlight it can really create bright highlights and make the color also look a little bit unnatural. And when you're drawing white fur make sure that you have a base layer that is slightly darker than what you want your end result to be. In this case I started out with some darker blues and greys as my base layer. Not too dark but a little bit darker than what I wanted my end result to be so that way when I added my white highlights on top it actually has something to show up on. On the screen there's a playlist with some videos that I thought you might enjoy so click on that and I'll see you over there.